innovate, accelerate, move technology forward. The startup revolution is now. Hello and welcome to Women Entrepreneurs as Business Innovation Leaders. Women as uh, Women as Builders is an effort of the WHY's I Blood Nice program to highlight women founders from DOSDP Shared Funded Program with a goal to show women entrepreneurs and their journeys towards success. I am your host for today, Sish Brasileño, and I welcome you to our program. This session of Women Builders is brought to you by the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council of Industry, Energy, Emerging Technologies Research and Development, ATS Center of Innovation and Technopreneurship at MCIIT, Miriam College Technology Business Incubator, and UP Growing and Developing Enterprises of the University of Philippines, Mindanao. Without further ado, let's do some introductions to our first plenary session. Social entrepreneurs are really innovative creatures. And the fact that these people balance people, planet, and profit is really awesome. Now, imagine being a woman and a social entrepreneur. That's right, right? So for this session, we'll be talking about how these social entrepreneurs go above and beyond themselves to promote a greater good while innovating great products for, our, uh, for the market. So our first panel member, Ms. November, is the passionate founder of Plansville Health, a fully registered social enterprise company since 2017. And the company integrates conserving Philippine cinnamon and healthy food and non-food processing and trading to make the livelihood of small farmers and, plants and climate change while providing healthful goods to consumers. Our next expert speaker, is none other than Ms. Karen J. Sulatan, which is the founder and CEO of Edoxine. Making Filipino films accessible to all Filipinos, that's the goal of Ms. Karen. And she is also a filmmaker and a businesswoman. So Edoxine, formerly Pinoy Indie Film Roadshow, is new and unconventional platform to promote indie films that are made by small film producers and film. And the goal of Edoxine is to make Filipino films accessible to every Filipino. Um, other than that, we also do have uh, other panels in the session that couldn't make it, but I'd also love to introduce what they do. So one is Miss Joy, who is the founder of Offerman Cacao Farms that specializes in creating briquettes, mainly from cocoa cocoa pod husk mixed with rice husk. And also, uh, Miss Deborah Gay Estacio, uh, who is the co-founder and CEO of Action South Philippines, and her company is a community-based organization that implements sustainable projects focused on quality, community empowerment, and capacity building throughout the Philippines. Okay. Just the start of our session. Thank you so much for coming, Miss November and Miss Karen. Uh, uh, we're ecstatic to have you here. So let's start off with our discussion. So maybe you could introduce a little bit. I mean, I introduced you earlier, but I'd love for you to talk about what you do, uh, uh, what specifically is uh, uh, the startup or the social enterprise that you're doing. Maybe we could start off with Miss Karen. Um, hello, Paul. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, Edoxine is the newest streaming platform in the market. And we concentrate with educational and socially relevant independent films. And we have three types of block screenings, online, face-to-face, -face, and hybrid, which is a combination of face-to-face uh, -face and online film showing. Okay. So how about Mr. November? Yeah, uh, magandang umaga po sa lahat. I'm November Cañesoyo. I'm the CEO and founder of Plantsville Health. So Plantsville uh, is a social enterprise and we aim to save the Philippine cinnamon uh, in partnership with the farmers and by providing healthful products to our consumers uh, in the face of climate change. Uh, so 
uh, the Philippines eh naman, uh, hindi po nalalaman ng karamihan na maraming po tayong sariling atin, hindi po siya imported. In fact, the course of the Philippine history really changed because of the, the Philippines eh naman. So we, have, uh, we hope to bring it back to our forests. And we hope to in, uh, engage the community to make it really sustainable. And we engage them by planting it, developing products, and engaging the general public. So people will get to know that we have our Philippine cinnamon and see the high value that it has. Right. So not very two particular communities. One, for example, for Ed Cine, a uh, slew of Filipino independent filmmakers and Miss November helping the charge to becoming uh to bringing back philippine cinnamon into our forest and also making products from our own cinnamon here in the philippines right so now i'd like to ask you for uh, for next question uh i mean before your life as a social entrepreneur i mean it would have been quite different so can you tell us a little bit about your journey from before you were starting as a before you started an entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur, and now, what, would, what do you think would be the difference? And what, how did your journey start? So maybe we could go on first with Mr. Lambert. Uh, yes. So uh, back in college, I took up social entrepreneurship. No? At that time, it was called Community Development Economics. So for four years when I was in college, I was a volunteer in environmental and social action. Uh, it was in La Salle, Bacolod, and uh, the community center is uh, Malaya, no? community extension program. But after I graduated, I went into research in UP Diliman, and then I went into banking. Uh, I hand, went to Bank of the Philippine Islands and saw uh, how about 300 entrepreneurs develop their business. And then after in my stint in BPI, I was assigned in Bacolod, Iliilo, Cebu. Uh, I went into uh, taking up my master's in business at the Asian Institute of Management in Makati. And afterwards, I was invited to join Globe Telecom. I stayed there for eight years. I did business planning, business ideation, and uh, segment marketing. So after uh, my stint in corporate for 15 years, I came back to Bacolod and then started my own business because I really want to become an entrepreneur. You know? But I also want, because when I left corporate, I was uh, middle age already, 30 plus. So I said, I'd like to learn business, but it has to be a meaningful one because I'd like it to be, you know, something that I can really pursue for the rest of my life. And I feel so grateful that I found what I am doing right now. Right. I mean, that's an awesome journey from being corporate, down to banking, and now you're, you're trying to save uh, Philippine cinnamon. I mean, that's that's a very huge shift. But I'd like to also then ask you, Karen, maybe how about your journey? How did you start? Um, yes, um, actually, I was an accidental social entrepreneur. I didn't know that I'm doing a social right. enterprise already. Um, my yeah. background um, was uh, mostly in customer service. So I was a working student and mm -hmm. I started working at 18 years old at Pizza Hut, the call center 91111 Pizza Hut Delivery. And yeah. until um, I was able to enter international BPOs like Teleperformance, yeah. Converges, and etc. So for almost eight years, I have long experience with customer service. That's why I have long patience. That's why I'm. it's easy for me to relate with different kinds of people, especially right now in the film industry. Film directors, producers, actors, they have different personalities. So my customer service skills was able to help me to handle different kinds of clients it's, uh, in government offices and in schools. And um, I really wanted to become a film director. That's why I studied filmmaking at the UP Film Institute. So Edoxine is a culmination of my education, IT, business, and film. So, so master ko yung, uh, yung filmmaking at UP Film Institute. And along the way, I met a lot of struggling producers and filmmakers. And sabi ko, I think my plano si God, that's why I took IT and business, okay. then film, so that I can help these people 
na they have great films that are life changing. They promote our culture and open our, our open up our our eyes about the social issues in the country. And ayon, uh, parang pinagtagpi-tagpi siya na because of that I was able to develop a doxine which was yeah. formerly Pina Indie Films Roadshow. Na before face to face lang kami na black screenings and because of the pandemic and with the help of the OST, nagkaroon kami ng streaming platform that you can already uh, see on uh, edoxine.com. Right. Awesome. No, parang it's a, it's like the journey of serendipity uh, as along the ways of becoming a filmmaker, you suddenly found out that there is something that you could do. Parang I'd like to also ask Mr. Weber, no? uh, what made you uh, go to uh, to Philippine cinema. What was so distinct about Philippine cinema, and how did you like find out that uh, this is this was this is something that I'd I'd love to do? Okay, so actually, uh, before I was doing this, I'm I'm like most Filipinos. I also don't know that we have our own Philippine cinema. So at that time, uh, I was uh, no, I was after I came back to from Manila, I did. What I really like to do, which is really gardening. So when I was uh, doing organic gardening in my house, I said, "Kasi malit lang yung aking garden." I said, "I will uh, maximize my garden and I will plant superfood." So I was also blogging at that time, and then one of the uh, superfood that I said I will plant was the cinnamon. So Shepre, when you're blogging, you're doing research. Uh, I discovered that we have our own Philippine cinnamon. So when I was blogging, I saw right away the opportunity, the need and opportunity in the market. No, no, we we have Philippine cinnamon, pala, and yet we we import almost all of our cinnamon in the Philippines. So I said, why are we importing when we have our own? And then why are we not plant? So not discover ko that. The reason pala we're not using it kasi our Philippine cinnamon are critically endangered. So wala pala tayong supply. So nakita ko agad na there's a lot of uh, opportunity uh, of planting it and developing products with it. Yun. So I just want to highlight that we were colonized by Spain because of our Philippine cinnamon. Remember, they were looking for spices. And during that time, cinnamon was called gold dust of Europe. So until now, cinnamon is the fourth most important spice in the entire world. And not only that, as food, it is used as food, medicine, and cosmetics. We also discovered that aside from the bark, we can also use the leaves for its essential oil. So, totoo nga, cinnamon talaga is practically gold. And the yeah. Filipinos are sitting on this gold. And I think that the market has to know how valuable it is. Right. It's like the gold dust of Europe. Europe at Europe. the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's very valuable. You know? So it also came from like a hobby. It just started out like uh, as a passion project for planting, then turned into a social enterprise. It's a wonderful journey. So, I mean, being a social entrepreneur, you have to deal not only with uh, uh, selling your products or um, putting your products out there in the market, very essential component of it is your community. And I know, for one, Ms. November, you're handling farmers, Ms. Karen, you're handling indie film producers, these are very specific uh, specific types of people. Maybe you can talk us through about how, uh, what are some challenges or what is what it's like to maybe talking to farmers or talking to you with the community. Maybe also uh, Ms. Karen can share about talking to uh, uh, indie film producers and how did it go about? How did you make them come together and, and uh, participate in your social enterprise? I guess Ms. Karen can go first. Um, yes, very challenging uh, to talk with the producers and filmmakers, uh, especially uh, they have different personalities, is what I've mentioned. Um, when I started, I always cry because some yeah. of them, kapag kaunti lang yung audience, like less than 10 people, 20 people, they're not happy, they will not attend the blast screening and 
ay ilang ilang balde na yung naluha ko uh, for or get for help uh, the the capacity of the venue is 400 and namit ko lang 300 audience and uh, it happened in Vinil and it was a fundraising um, film festival so one of the film directors hindi siya masaya kasi nga hindi ko namit yung 400 and he canceled the film showing and sabi ko sa na lahat ng kita lahat lahat sa na wala nang kita yung school actually this is fundraising for the scholars kasi i was a scholar of the mill so hindi niya tinuloy kinansel niya luckily uh, i found another film director who has a heart and hindi niya tinitingnan na gaano kalaking kikitain niya so ayun he saved me and Marami rin nag-cancel na mga bumili ng tickets okay. because of that incident because they like that particular movie. But wala akong magagawa. So, ayun, yeah. uh, umiyak talaga ako and mas- mas- masyadong ma- ma- sobrang hirap talaga nung ginagawa namin. And okay. yun, isa sa mga, and lucky day, because of my patience and uh, dami kong namit na mga mababait na producers and filmmakers who understand what is a social enterprise. Kasi with Edoxine, uh, we we uh, tatlo kasi ginagawa naming uh, happy end for film sh- uh, showing for example our black screening rate na standard for government offices for example is 20,000 pesos so 10,000 goes to the producer 10,000 to the uh, uh, to edoxine and 8,000 to our marketing team so ang dami kong nakita nakilala na sobrang mababait na kah- like for example Derek Elwood Perez he's a master director Kasabay niya si Lalino Broca, si La Ishmael Bernal, and yeah. isa na lang siya sa mga natitirang mga veteran na filmmaker, mga master director. With him, kahit 20 lang, 10 lang yung umaten, he's happy and sobrang eager niya to give talks. Unlike the others na kapag hindi mo na-meet yung uh, number of audience, hindi nila atinan. So I found some people like him na hindi nila tinitingnan yung, pe- yung pera lang, the number of audience. Kasi with me, uh, the, the reason why I developed Edoxine because my life was changed by watching an indie film in school in a religion class. And that is fireproof. Naniniwala ko na kahit sampu lang yung umatid, by watching a film and then the director or producer is there and to give a talk, may, may isang person na may inspire, may change yung life, like what happened to me. So, ayun, marami pa rin namang mababait. Like, that's why um, we have Edoxine. And thankful ako sa mga producers and filmmakers na mahaba yung pasensya na kahit ang dami kong palpak ng mga black screenings, they still believe in me. So, ayun po. I mean, Miss Karen, you're already here. And yeah, I mean, the progress that you've made is very great. It's awesome how you've reached other, um, a lot of people with the power of indie films. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really hard. It's a struggle to meet ends with people who don't have the same ideals as you. you know? It's 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 uh, it's kind of uh, you have to meet uh, in between, you know, with the people that you're working with. Uh, you, you, you prove that uh, even with uh, a lot of producers having a lot of huge egos, you even found like the right set of people who are willing to work with you and do your passion. No, social enterprises start small, but dream big. I mean, let's for this of ever. How about you dealing with farmers also? Uh, yes. So remember that uh, when we started, the Philippine cinema was uh, critically endangered and very, yeah. very few, practically none, uh, know about it. So kung titingnan lang natin kasi yung trajectory ng Philippine cinema, it, it's, it will be from critically endangered to practically extinct no yes. so what we're trying to do is really reverse the course of uh, the philippine cinema by educating everyone in the value chain so para kang yeah. para imagine ka na nagbubungkal ka ng sobrang laking problema and you're trying to flip it so yeah. obviously i cannot do it alone so sabi ko oh i have to educate every single person i meet kasi Practically no one knows about the Philippine cinema. Pero, as, as same experience ni Karen, may nakikita kong mga 
parang kindred spirits no so yung first ko na nakita is the Negros Occidental Provincial Environment Management Office may kaibigan ang sister ko doon so when as in ano talaga siya la Philippine trees lover talaga siya so when i ask about do you know kung saan yung kalingag so she pointed me out right away oh doon sa Don Salvador Benedicto so it's a big win but when i spoke to the farmers Alam nila yung kaningag, pero hindi nila alam yung tinamon. Even when I spoke to the town mayor, hindi niya alam yun. So I had to educate every single one of them. So I, when we went to the mountain, pinanap pa namin yung trees. Pakita natin kung saan yung... Alam nila yung kaningag, no? Pero ahanapin mo yun, eh, to make sure it is really the Philippine cinnamon. So, for example, yung difficulty ko doon, syempre, was using my own money, di ba? Hey. So, nagko-commit lang ako. Tapos, ang travel noon, at least one hour via bus. Tapos, galing doon sa highway, maghahabal-habal ka pa, papuntong bundok. At nung du- pag dumadating ako doon na umuulan, hindi ka na pwedeng umuwi kasi sayo yung pamasahe, di ba? So, alam mo yun, nag, naghahabal-habal kami sa rain, tapos uh, nagko-cross kami sa river para makita namin yung tree. Kasi remember, konti na lang talaga yung tree. Tapos dadaan ka dun sa bundok na slippery. Pag nahulog ka dun, medyo bato lang naman yung, yung datatingan mo, ba? But all of these things, parang makikita mo talaga who has the passion for it. But uh, at the same time, nung una-una when I raced with the farmers, nag-worry sila dahi if we take it up. Kung, kung mag-harvest tayo niyan, mauubos na lang talaga yung sinama namin. So, sabi ko, nanay, kailangan i-change natin yung atin mindset. Imaginein mo lang, kung madis, mad, convince natin ng farmers na kung itatanim siya natin at bibilhin ko, it, dadami yan, hindi yan mauubos. So, totoo nga. So, in 1997, we started counting the trees. Only 50 were remaining at the time. Pero we were able to convince the farmers' organization, we were able to convince the mayor and the local government unit invested money. So by uh, a year after, the farmers sold 14,000 seedlings. So right away, yay na kagad, ba? And then, yung tanim nila, syempre, maraming challenges on the part ng farmers. Kahit tinuruan mo sila, syempre, ang dami din lang mga, mga kailangan ding matuto. konti lang yung tukubo. Pero, nung nakita na nila na we were we have started buying, nakikita na nila na hindi lang, kasi inuuling yun before eh, ay, ito pala yung essential oil, ito pala yung sanitizer, ito pala yung sinaman coco sugar na produce. then they are convinced na, okay, hindi lang pala simple yung kahoy ito. So, in the past, tinaapakapakan lang nila yung sinaman. Ngayon, ginagard na talaga nila yung trees nila kasi alam nila na mapagkukuha na nila ng seedlings na pwede nilang ibenta. Not just to me, but for the others who could buy it. Tapos, that's on the farmer side pa lang. Meron pang side yeah. ng processing. So yung processing, hindi siya simple yung processing kasi yung negros, wala naman kaming industriya dito na nagdi-distill. Pero may nakita ako na isang foundation siya, social enterprise din sila. At nagdi-distill siya ng leaves for me. Nakakita ako ng Technological University of the Philippines, Visayas, na nag-help sa akin. Binigyan ako ng facility. So we have a processing area and we now have an FDA registration. Tapos nakakuha pa ako ng funding sa DOST at tinulugan ako ng MSUIIT to, 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 to perfect our distillation. And now we can really now produce. And I am so glad to say that we are now successful in propagating the Philippine cinnamon from cuttings. We don't have to wait for the season of the cinnamon para makagrow kami ng seedling because we are now able to root the seedling. We have now found a trick how to harvest the leaves so it grows two to three times more. And we have found a way of processing the essential oil and essential water and then bottling it and have found people who will help in the branding So soon, hopefully, you can see us in Amazon. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Very, very distinct journeys now from this November. I mean, started from uh, just identifying the, the number of trees available down to now even um, knowing how to process the Philippine Cinnamon. And Miss Karen, the number of shows, number of uh, uh, number of block trees that became 
But now, no, you can see that there is traction, there is progress, and we're moving forwards in the future. Uh, but I'd just like to ask, no, I mean, um, we're all we're both you're both social entrepreneurs, and I know that you also serve as uh, you have gen, uh, you have very specific role maybe in the household as a as a partner or as a mother. Uh, how did you? Uh, how were you able to cope to these uh, to these things? And um, what what are some secrets? No, what are some secrets in your part for you to handle these kinds of roles? And as well as become a social enterprise as entrepreneur, which is a very big role. No, yeah, maybe you could share somebody if somebody wants to go first. Share, the Miss Karen. Um, actually, nakaka-burn out ang pagiging social entrepreneur, especially your small organization. Okay. It's like, pasan mo ang daigdi. Like, uh, sobrang, sobrang hirap kasi like, like, you have multiple roles na pati pagiging, actually, uh, like me, I don't have an assistant kasi yung trabaho ng assistant, mas kaya ko pang gawin, saka mas mabilis ko magagawa without an assistant. And okay. ang ginagawa ko is, number one, every week, pag sobrang burn out na ako, nagpapamassage ako. It's my way of to be healed kasi sobrang nakaka-stress. Like, um, yung iba, di ba, once a month lang, iba hindi nagpapamassage. Minsan ako yeah, twice uh, a week, lalo na kapag oh. hectic yung schedule, then I'm traveling a lot. After ko magpamassage, uh, I'm already energized. So, after like two days, three days, stress na naman ako, magpamassage yeah. ako agad. So, that's one number one secret. That's why. <laughs> I still have energy every week kahit nakaka-burn out. And la- lahat hawa ko, IT, marketing, admin, POST expenses, reporting, r- mga sobrang hirap. Alam, alam ni Miss November yan. Lah- lahat talaga. Kaya nakaka-burn out. And aside from that, um, I have dogs and cats. So pag may pusa ako, hinahawang ko. K- k- katabi ko sa work, nakawala yung stress ko. So nakakatulong yung mga pets. And aside from that, I, I travel para makapag-unwind. So, ayun, and then I have some people who supporting me. Like my fiancé and uh, yung Edoxine team. Uh, minsan kapag meeting namin, yung meeting namin nagiging parang ano siya, parang barkada, get, get away, right. or get parang away. bonding. So, we're doing that at the same time na yung work, it's also a, a pleasure. So, ayun. Right. Basta, pero number one for me tip sa mga founders, Try niya magpa-massage. <laughs> Massage is the secret. Da. Massage yes. is the secret. Para mapag-unwind. Personal, personal time is, is very awesome. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a must. Kumbaga. Yeah, I mean, for one, there's a lot of things to work on uh, in, our entrepre- in our enterprise. Relatively, I think Mr. November can also understand that when you're starting out small, everything is kind of your job. <laughs> so, for example, the IT department, this department, this department, you, you want to have uh, control over these things. And you could hear also to the side of Miss November, what's your, what's, your, what's your experience or how do you think to get out of balancing everything also as a woman and also as a social entrepreneur? So, kasi ako, di ba may, uh, I'm married and we have one yeah. child. No, So, when, when I started it, Nakita ko na kaagad, prior to this business kasi, I had a call center. I had a 15-seat na call center. At nakita ko mm-hmm. na uh, tumas yung BP ko nun eh. Kasi nag, uh, nagdadahal kami sa US and Canada gabi. So, alam ko na na the way pala to incorporate my business is to make sure that it is wax a lifestyle and the health a uh, goal that I have. So, kaya ako nasa organic and natural. Ayun. So, having said that, so, yung ginawa ko is really to embed it in my lifestyle. So, for example, like, may meeting tayo ngayon, pero hindi mo alam, the, the washing machine is uh, moving sa loob <laughs> yeah. ng bahay. Pataya ko niyan. Basta anyway, yung point ko lang is na it's, I have embedded my work in my mm. lifestyle talaga. So, wala siyang, this is my work, this is my life. My work is my life. My life is my work. Eh, parang right. ganon. So, seamless siya. So, yun yung na-discover ko compared sa corporate na 8 to 5, pupunta ka sa opisina, ganon. May opisina naman kami, no? But I can embed talaga my life in my work. So, that's one. Yung uh, second is, uh, tawag dito, kagaya ni Karen, 
Uh, nagpapamasaj ako once a week tsaka acupuncture kasi syempre yung kung uminom ng gapot, 'di ba? Kasi natural nga eh. Ma- mas ma- mas 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 stronger tayo actually pag natural yung ating mga ginagamit. Uh, tapos yung third siguro is I want parang generally as a matter of principle, I always make my associations hard working, no? So for example, when when I For example, I'm in a meeting. I'm also trying to find out, aside from listening to Karen, in the future, kaya is there something I can do with Karen or with Siege? Para yung time code, not just on the recording like this, pero magagamit ko siya in the future. So I'm hitting uh, two birds with one stone, de ba? So yun yung parati kong as a matter of principle, I make my time very hardworking. Right. So, yeah, very awesome. No? It's awesome notes. Uh, somehow you have embedded your 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 venture into your lifestyle. And as uh, as Miss Karen also said, na, na, you make uh, you make the enjoyable parts of your work. No? Uh, make make enjoyable parts in your work. For example, going out with your uh, co-workers, your team. So it, it makes like a bond. It, becomes like a family also so that's awesome no? it's taking part and also taking care of your health I, i mean that's a very very basic form of taking uh of, of de-stressing uh getting a massage getting acupuncture getting uh the the feel of uh, good health no? well those are some great points now i think we're down last to some uh, two more questions you know, that I, i hope you can answer no? uh, One, no, uh, I'd like you guys to look into like the future of uh, social entrepreneurship and for women inside social entrepreneurship. What is your wish for uh, women in entrepreneurship or what is your message for uh, uh, starting up women social entrepreneurs and what are some things that uh, you'd love to share to them, most especially when they're starting up their social un- enterprise journey? Maybe Miss November can go on first. Actually, my theory is uh, social entrepreneurship is the way to a sustainable future talaga. So, yan talaga yung thinking ko na with the kind of uh, climate that we have, climate change that we have, the level of poverty in the world, not just in the Philippines, and the level of uh, miseducation or the lack of education, I think The, the the really good way to go is the is entrepreneurship hindi pwede na pera pera na lang it there has to be a triple bottom line mahirap to gawin but it has to be done for all of our survival so having said that yung kayang battle cry ko parati is conservation livelihood health and climate change yan talaga yung filter na ginagamit ko ito pa yung activity na to, does it address the four points that I have imposed on ourselves? So, I would recommend siguro sa mga women, social entrepreneurs, uh, and all social entre- entrepreneurs, is to set filters in the things that they do. Is it consonant to your vision and your enterprise? So, yun siguro, always create a filter and use that filter in everything that you do whether simple or complex yung tapos yung second is the the gears for social entrepreneurship and ESG environment social and governance have started uh, really ibig sabihin there is really a natural push now for ESG not just on social enterprises but it has come to the level of corporate, which means that whatever you do right now and towards social entrepreneurship, I think just like if we do our business properly lang, control our costs, develop our market, develop our people, I think our chances uh, of uh, going and moving forward is big. So, yun yung siguro kung ipa, iiwan sa mga social entrepreneurs. This is the time for social entrepreneurship. So I hope people will get into it. 
right? This is the time for people's uh, uh, people to start social entrepreneurship. Uh, it's a hard task, but someone has to do it. I mean, yeah, that that's an awesome message. Ms. Karen? Um, for me, uh, ang natutunan ko uh, dito sa social entrepreneurship, number one is fighting capitalism. So I've been in the corporate world for more than 10 years and ang, ang nakita ko, ang yumayaman lang yung mga owners of the businesses. And kahit magtrabaho yung mga employees like for 30 years, 50 years in the company and mauubos lang din yung savings nila and after that, wala na. Um, with social entrepreneurship, what I've learned is you can make money through networking. Na you don't need to work like eight to five days, uh, eight to five hours uh, in a day. And naniniwala ko, in-incorporate ko yung natutunan ko kay Robert kayo sa akin na the richest people in the world build networks. Everyone else is trained to look for work. So uh, that's why I'm able to travel. Hindi ko kailangan magtrabaho yeah. ng uh, 40 hours a week kahit five hours lang or four hours in a day or three hours in a day lang ako mag-work. Uh, I'm, I, I can still earn money because of the network that I built through the years. Na kahit yung mga iniyak kong ilang balde, uh, nagbunga siya ngayon na yung mga clients ko sila na yung lumalapit sa akin kahit natutulog na lang ako pag ko, um, I have a schedule, I have a black screening for this school, can I book a black screening? And sila na talaga yung lumalapit and nag, nagbunga talaga yung hard work ko. And aside from that, na ang goal din ng social entrepreneurship is nga number one is to provide livelihood and to change lives. Na kami with Edoxine, uh, we want to change lives and transform hearts uh, through the films that we're showing na educational and socially relevant. And um, aside from that, yung mga team members ko na dati sila, biktima din sila ng capitalism like they were in the same film company pero ang kumikita lang talaga yung boss nila then uh, sobrang tuliit lang na nakukuha nila right now for with Edoxine for every black screening they have a share. Some of our yeah. film marketers they're earning 6,000 pesos per black screening and isa to sa pinaka the best na experience ko with my marketers and uh, Kuya Roger naka 20 black screening siya last March to June and he earned 120,000 in the span of 2 months and dahil sa ginagawa niya yun nakapag-start na siya magpatayo ng bahay so yun yung isa sa mga goal ng social entrepreneurship na from victim of capitalism right now they are empowered na kumikita na sila ng malaki na through the number of black screenings or close deals, malaki yung makukuha nila. So that's why yun yung magandang nagagawa ng social entrepreneurship na you're sharing the wealth to your community, to your team members, hindi lang ikaw yung umaangat. So with social right. entrepreneurship, angat buhay na. Right. It's a great equalizer, Miss Karen, no? you multiply yung blessing that you give or that you have in terms of entrepreneurship and you bring not only yourself the products that you create but the people behind it that's awesome that's a great message so but we'll wrap up this session uh, wrap up this first part uh but before we'll wrap this first part sa ating session, sa ating session would like to ask if you have uh uh, any contact details that you'd like to share? If there are people interested to working with you uh, here at our Philippine uh, Philippine Startup Week uh, session, which is a Women as Builders program, uh, Miss November, any contact details you'd like to share? Sige. So thank you, Siege. Uh, for all those who would like to uh, have their uh, Philippine cinnamon in their products, uh, please. Uh, contact us through our website www.plansville-health.com it's the first or you can go to our facebook page home organic ph plantsville health uh, or you can when you go to our uh, facebook instagram youtube uh, you can uh, know you can see our contact details there so but i'd like to impress that aside from the philippine cinnamon essential oil and our consumer products, which are the Philippine cinnamon seedling, we have the cinnamon cocoa sugar, 
We have the moisturizing sanitizers composed of uh, essential oil and uh, essential water. We have natural mouthwash. We have massage oil. And we also have the planting kits. You can also buy from us in bulk. So you yourself can develop your own products for your own market. Right. How about for Ms. Karen? Uh, we can always partner with schools, government offices, even companies and foundations to conduct a block screening. And for us, there was 25 people, even small organizations can already uh, make a block screening and we make Filipino films accessible and affordable to all Filipinos locally and abroad. So you may always contact me at karen at edoxine.com or visit our website at www.edoxine.com. So hindi lang kami for film showing, we also do um, video productions. Uh, so maybe Miss November in the future we can partner, we can make a documentary about Cinnamon uh, cinnamon in the Thank Philippines, you. so that we can educate more Filipinos about the importance of cinnamon. And ayun yung maganda yeah. nating pwedeng uh, maging Thank project you. in the future. And I have Mr. Heck Gloria from Bacolod. He's also part of I know him. Yeah. He was from so, Globe. Yes, and he's from, right now he's uh, working in Lasal uh, Bacolod as a professor. Ayun po. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Right. Along with the uh... Uh, along with this one is a budding opportunity to collaborate. That's what's wonderful about entrepreneurship and networking. So, right. Thank you so much. Uh, if you love the book, uh, Miss Karen, uh, book uh, shows. Uh, if you want to collaborate with her, feel free to message her on her email. If you want more Philippine cinnamons in your products, want to buy Philippine cinnamon products and as well as integrate it into your um, own stores, feel free to contact Plantsville Health and November can answer you. So, all right, thank you so much, Miss November and Miss Karen, for the wonderful conversation that we have we have today. And it was a thank very, you, very insightful conversation today. Uh, that was truly an inspiring session, and we hope that you guys at the room are also inspired by their stories. All right, so now we move on to our second plenary session where we will be featuring women entrepreneurs. And our next speakers are tech startup founders with a passion to change the world with one idea at a time. Well, it's no secret that being a startup founder is hard. But do you also know that there are only two out of 10 female tech founders or startup leaders all over the world? Now, we're featuring the women that are changing and easing this gap. Our first panel member is Ms. Steph Naval. Uh, she is the founder and chief executive officer of EMBA, which is the social enterprise that envisions communities which mental health care and education are readily accessible in order to build a nation that fosters misgender empathy and care for the well-being of Filipinos. Our next panel member is Ms. Leia. Uh, she is uh, the, the founder of Husayko, which is the social enterprise and startup that uh, empowers Filipino artists to increase their income, establish their profession, and ease their creative process with their clients. And her mission is to elevate the idea of being an artist as a viable career and to prove that the industry can generate professionals and contribute to the culture building in nation and the company also upskills artists, connects them to jobs in the creative industry. Our next plenary speaker, or our other plenary speaker, is none other than Ms. Rose Villamore, the CEO and founder of Virtualahan. Virtualahan is a social enterprise that eliminates employment barriers for people with disabilities, and former sex workers and drug addicts, persons in jail, indigenous people, and other in disadvantaged communities who are socially excluded in the workplace. Virtualan uh, does this through online training, remote work, life coaching, and community building using cost-effective and transferable technology. And uh, last but not least, our next plenary speaker is Maria Wilveda Anora, who is the CEO and co-founder 
of uh, of Atu Ani. It is a startup social enterprise based in Bohol, Philippines, that produces and distributes organically farmed fresh produce and processed food products. It offers free delivery service at volume orders straight from their farm and partner farmers to its individual, corporate, restaurant, and brick and mortar stores called the customers. So, right, thank you so much for coming in in our session today, and I hope that we have a wonderful talk today. Uh, so, aside from our introductions, um, that would be good if we could also tell us a little bit more about our startup, what do we do, and what's the problem that we're trying to solve. So, maybe we could start in, start with Ms. Wilby uh, to start the conversation. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So, um, well, Steve mentioned already about uh, we are into the agriculture business, but basically I wanted to emphasize the produce to demand model because this is where we use the platform that, they, the, that we are developing right now with uh, yeah. DOSD. So basically, um, for the term itself, produce to demand. So we have a problem in crop waste stage. Now to address that, we make use of the demand of the customers as well as crop soil compatibility um, and other uh, uh, weather conditions as well as topography to be able to provide recommendations to the farmers and what to plant so that we reduce this crop wastage. So that's basically the technology behind it. Thanks. All right. How about for Ms. Steph? What's your, uh, uh, what's Empath all about? How does it work? Or what can you share yes. with Empath? Sure. So Empath, here we provide accessible mental health care solutions and services in order to improve the well-being of, let's say, workplaces, schools, or even partnering up with nonprofits. So we provide, let's say, online therapy. And recently, we also um, also launched like programs for various sectors and communities as well. Right. Online therapy. I think that's, a, that's an awesome way to start, especially when we're trying to make make mental health um, services very much available to everyone. How oh, is Leia? Hi, yes. Um, so I'm Leia from Musai.co. So, well, specifically with the help of the OST grant fund, um, we're building an artist management platform for Filipino artists and creative workers. So with all the things happening and all the debates going yeah. around about creative industries, about um, Filipino artists and being sustainable, um, uh, we believe that ano, parang, ang punot dulo nun is education and employment. Yeah. So that's why what we're building is a learning to earning platform wherein they can um, learn business skills and not just business skills, yung um, about the Filipino identity, about how do you um, work around this and then create something about ourselves, our, our, our own identity. And on the other hand, you also match them to jobs. So sustainable, but in doing what they love. So, yeah. Right. Thank you. Diba, so for example, for like, if you're interested in art, first thing sasabihin ng nanay mo, walang pera dyan. But now we're, we're trying to change that narrative. We're changing it through creating yeah. jobs for accessible and doing something that you love. How about for Ms. Uh, how about for Ms. Rose? What's up with uh, Virtual Ahan? Yes, hello. Good morning. So uh, for us, we are an online school uh, for, for like, you know, to make it a layman's term. We are an online school <clears throat> providing accessible digital training for persons with disabilities and other marginalized groups. So the problem that we are trying to solve is the lack of accessible training. So when we say accessible, uh, for persons with disabilities, ang dami nilang struggles uh, kasi. For example, right. for the deaf, if a video doesn't have like a sign language interpretation or like a captioning, ang hirap nilang makarelate. For the blind, if it doesn't have like a narration, um, hindi nila alam kung anong nangyayari sa isang video like that. So what Virtual Hand does is we provide us accessibility uh, features to persons with disabilities so that they can have you know access to accessible training and also employment uh, opportunities. So but on top of uh, on top of that, we also want to break down employment barriers and also minimize workplace exclusion and discrimination because this is a very you know um, main problem uh, dealing with persons with disabilities 
is uh, the exclusion and uh, discrimination right. is very very common right i mean we don't want to ostracize this part of communities and we want them to be part of the community we want them to come back no, sa ating mga communi communities and also to make them it, make work inclusive for them yeah, that's a great opportunity right. for a lot of individuals so now i just like to ask out uh, ask out with a uh, first question no? maybe i know medyo miss universe at all. how did you start your journey to becoming a uh, ano, a social uh, tech startup founder so maybe you could start with this step well, what was your journey like yeah sure so for me yeah. at 14 years old i was manifesting a lot of mental health concerns and conditions so this was around high school and i had my first online yeah. therapy session there and i'm not sorry not online on um, therapy session yeah. then and then eventually it evolved to the whole online therapy platform so i've been under the mental health care system for over a decade already and because of this there still wasn't any significant changes throughout those that over than a decade and i think i wanted to definitely do something about it so making therapy more accessible or any other healthcare um, solution and also providing proper and quality mental health care for the clients whether it's from workplaces schools and also nonprofits and yeah, it was extremely difficult going through the mental health care system in the Philippines. And I think just going back, I just want to be that, uh, I guess, solid and very accessible provider for those who are really struggling with their mental health, emotional well-being, and to realize that despite what they're going through, there's definitely, I guess, hope or for them to be able to recover and live and thrive the best version of their life as well. I mean, yeah, there's... there's uh way back before i think there was a stigma around it right you know, if you're accessing mental health there, there's there's like a problem in it. and now we're trying to change the narrative we're changing that yeah. it's okay to go to these kinds of institutions and now with like you guys you know, starting out with making it more accessible especially here in the philippines with the, such a strong stigma really applaud you for doing that uh you could also Thank act with so you right no, no? So thank you so uh, uh, maybe you could ask Miss Wilby, how did you start with um, being passionate about uh, um, Ato Ani and where did you start uh, learning more about uh, the problem that you wanted to solve? So basically, um, it started because uh, I, I come from the Talks from the province no? mm -hmm. and then the prevalent mm -hmm. problem with the experience there is that a lot of the um, people in the community are actually going to the cities, including us, including our yeah. family. Because about, yeah, right, right? Um, because we have to go to schools, uh, cities, and also find jobs there. And um, as well, I was in a corporate before, before mm -hmm. I entered the social enterprise. And I figured that there is a lot of um, available land that is not being used, no? not yeah. only ours, but also in others. And there are a lot of opportunities that are not being maximized. My grandparents are farmers and then but then the next generation us will come to the city because we wanted to find better opportunities. And I see that um why not take advantage of it so that people can go to the rural communities, can go back to their families, or for example, can you know would not go out to the rural community because there's yeah. opportunity in there. So this is where um Ato Ani started. Right, that's awesome. So, so it's particularly something that has been like a generational thing. It started off with your grandparents being farmers, and now with the knowledge that you've gathered you know, in the in the modern or, or in the rather city life, you know, we're now bringing it towards more farmers so that it can be more accessible. That's awesome. You know? So uh, I heard also the Miss Leia is working on the platform for artists. You no. Know? And um, maybe you could share us, were you also an artist back then? What was your experience? Why did you start Psycho? Yeah, um, no, I'm not a student. So I was part of a dance group no yeah. college. And isa ako dun sa mm. mga, ano, mas excited sa extracurricular rather than the academic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so yun lahat yung fulfillment about yun nga, being with your fellow dancers, performing, and all the training na merong ano, self-improvement involved. 
And then um, we're also involved sa church, ganyan. And yung, doon nabuo yung um, social impact aspect using creativity. And then, so we, ano, we produce shows, we teach um, acting workshop, improv sa mga different mm-hmm. partner NGOs. And then, so um, what we also found out is um, yung, yung mga artists who teach, who mentor, are they also need help. Like they need sustainability yeah. in order for them to also share their their creative work diba? so so that's where we so fast forward um we're doing this all this meetups na educational and mas pinupuntahan nila yung mga business skills so during that time hindi pa ganun ka kumbaga matunog ang creative economy or creative industries and yung marketing like if um, kahit tawagin namin dancers lang pupunta ang graphic designers, videographers, ganyan. So, that's where we also found na yung gap na na what we're, we're trying to fill in ay hindi lang niche. So, sa buong creative yeah. or creative industry siya. And then, so, yun. So, um, and then, I'm also a graphic designer. I'm a graduate of advertising. Yeah. So, yung on the side lang yung freelance ko of doing, ano, creatives for for ano as a trade so that's where we streamlined na okay may marami opportunities dito and they just need guidance so far yeah. kasi nasa gig economy ang um, uh, creatives and parang laging self taught so yeah. yun, hopefully with the platform and with what we're doing and magkaroon din ng structure for themselves yeah. right i agree miss leia no the gig economy is getting bigger and the competition is getting bigger. And how you separate yourself or how you get opportunities can be just uh, by having like something special, like having a training or being better, having like a certification. I think that's a, that's a great way to start off. No? For example, for individuals yeah. who really are looking towards or creative individuals who are really trying to jumpstart their, their careers in the things that they love. Yeah. And talking about careers, no? Uh, Miss Rose talked about how um, people no, uh, in the rather disadvantaged communities are also kind of ostracized and, you know, it, they have a hard time doing or having a career. So what what does Virtual Ahan do currently? Or, you know, uh, what are the things that you, how did you start or where did it take off for you when you wanted to start? Yeah. Um- it's actually a personal live experience of one of my co-founder, Ryan. So, tatlo kami, magkakapatid kami tatlo as a co-founders, a uh, co-founder team. And then, um, my, my, uh, one of my co-founder, Ryan, has this chronic disease that's preventing him, prevented him to, like, you know, get a job, um, medical job, because he wanted to be a medical doctor, ganyan. And, um, when he applied after graduating as a medical technologist, um, um, he rapid siya maghanap ng trabaho because in the medical certificate, nakalagay doon yung, ano, yung, yung disease niya. So, it's hard. So, uh, he attended this, you know, mga business um, um, trainings and all. And then that's where the idea came in na. And then the three of us are working online already that time. And um, coming tatlo is like we bring our friends, family members sa bahay namin, uh, tinuturuan namin sila one-on-one to like uh, how is it like working online kasi yeah. before is hindi pa talaga siya mainstream mag-work online. Yeah. Ang daming skepticism about working online. So, but then they are curious. We are just at home and like we are working like a professional, earning like, you know, a professional, working for clients abroad and then a lot of uh, especially mga ano namin mga uh, friends na mga work at home ay mga stay at home mom so nagki-curious sila paano ba yun siya ginagawa bakit kayo nag-earn na sa bahay lang kayo you know uh, you're not employed in like a corporate setup ganun so yun tinetrain namin sila so there's this missionary mindset already in us that we really wanted to help we wanted to share we just don't know that there is this you know, term social entrepreneurship, and we don't know that we can build a startup. That so that idea uh, was started by one of our co-founder. Why not? We'll make this official. We share our skills, and since um, it is a personal live experience, we have family members who are persons with disability, and we have seen the struggle. Like you know, hindi na employ talaga. Hindi na employ if na employ man are 
common lang I, I mean uh, the jobs are like you know mga uh, not really high paying jobs that mga cleaning staff labor staff ganon uh, so that's where the idea that yes uh, if we wanted to build this and we wanted to make this official why not we focus on the persons with disabilities because they are the one who will really benefit from this opportunity knowing think of those people who are in wheelchair think of those people who are already in bed but are still capable mentally you know they have the skills but then are not able to uh the only thing that's them are their disability like mobility nahihirapan sila mag trans uh, mag transport to like office job uh, setting so yeah that's where the idea started to why not uh we create this but we didn't know that there is this thing a social entrepreneurship before later na namin na discover that what we are doing is a social entrepreneurship right, right. i mean um at first you know the journey will be for example different for for us i i might assume that not all of us thought it was a social entrepreneurship uh enterprise right. at first right? mm. so we were just really focused on bringing what value we can give to communities mm -hmm. and how we can mm -hmm. help out individuals that are in need. I mean, the story of uh, individuals who have who are in disadvantaged communities who think they have they only have, uh, for example, as what you said, uh, the the rather uh, lower paying jobs. No, uh, I think it's awesome that Virtualahan is bringing them the opportunity to also equalize and also get a career opportunity for scaling no? even with the even with as you mentioned this disadvantage you have eliminating disadvantages that's awesome so um for uh for one i'd also like to add on the question right uh, another question so i mean you guys all of you are uh, doing a social enterprise but other than that you're doing a tech startup no? you guys are also doing something in in the lines of tech, you know, bridging the gap between also doing a tech startup with a social enterprise, that means you have like extra more work, extra more juggling. And on top of that, you have, for example, like uh, we have uh, women, uh, uh, we have gender roles you know, that we currently do, uh, do also have. You know? So this is, these are things that are really in, uh, really part uh, of our lives, whether we choose it, no, as we as we choose it, no. Uh, I just like to ask maybe, uh, what are some personal, uh, personal things that you currently struggle with? What are some personal struggles, most especially if you are a tech, uh, social entrepreneur slash tech startup founder, and how do you go? Uh, what's the strategy? How did you reach all of this? How how did you, how did you get to uh, this point of your lives? Maybe you could start off with Miss Leia. Yeah, depend depending on sa naging season ko in life when I was still single compared to where I am now. Para I have a I have a two year old son and first time mom. So yung mga um, insecurities, mga challenges ko that time was you know attraction. Like we, we've been doing this for the longest time already. And then yeah. when I when I learned about social impact, social enterprise, mahirap naman palatalaga siya. Um, yeah. And then fast forward to yun nga, na yung focus ko shifted to yun nga, building my family, more uh, giving more time for my son and being a uh, yun nga, kumbaga, gender roles, di ba? Like, yeah. dapat maayos ang bahay, ganyan. Um, yung struggle siguro, ano, parang ano lang, uh, ngayon, uh, gradually washing off yung mga expectations <laughs> na nasa isip ko when I was single. So, yeah, so... Siguro yun din, my, my family helped me you know, overcome yung mga things na hindi naman at the larger scale or larger scheme of things. Not really that sobrang important. As long as, you know, as a person, you're doing everything you can. Yeah. And then you're still delivering yung, yung traction na hinahanap, yan pa rin, ginagawa mo pa rin siya. And yeah. ano pa rin, you're, you're still making a dent. Yeah, so I know at the end of yeah. the day, yeah, right. So, like priorities, no, setting out priorities and also, um, not only just priorities, but also making sure that you you fulfill the passions that you want to do whilst mm -hmm. also becoming, uh, 
becoming a mom, doing doing stuff at home, no? uh, not giving up still becoming an entrepreneur because that's that's you know that's that's a, one of the rather wonderful passions that you could pursue. And yeah, I really applaud you for that, Miss Leia. No? So maybe also from uh, Miss uh, anyone who would like to also share. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would like to go yeah. next because I'm related to Ms. Leia. Yeah. Uh, I have two two kids, actually, uh, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. So imagine the, <laughs> para yeah. akong, ano, para, imagine like running a blender tapos walang cover. Mm-hmm. Parang ganun yung life ko. <laughs> like, you know, because boys pa talaga that. So I, mm-hmm. we started virtualahan. I am uh, single pa ako and then I get married. So parang nasundan talaga yung journey and all. When I yeah. was like ano wala pang kids, uh pre-kids, my 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 ano 100% of my energy really I can invest yeah. into into virtualahan. But then nung dumating na yung kids, so you know you have to juggle priorities and all. Kasi I am an advocate. I really wanted like yeah. to be an advocate of like um forming the kids. I mean Uh, nurturing the kids in their formative years, preventing like childhood traumas and unhappy childhood. Like, uh, in my department right now, na hinahandle sa virtual and it's about well-being and health. I learned so much from our community members that I want, I don't want na may experience ng mga mga kids. So, uh, ng mga kids ko. So that it's very very challenging and like. Uh, being on the part of the leadership team like it's more of mental work and like how to run the the the, the, the social enterprise na, and how to like uh i'm wearing different hats at the same time it, it's yeah. very very struggling ang, ang, ang super struggle talaga siya. so um And I know a lot of, of, of women entrepreneurs, a lot of women entrepreneurs can really relate to it. Like, you know, I, you wanted to be hands-on mom, but you also wanted to be hands-on in the organization or the enterprise that uh, you build. And how to balance that is very, very hard. So I, I, it came to a point that I had a breakdown, actually. So I, and, uh, because hindi talaga siya maiiwasan that you will have a breakdown giving birth is hard already i'm also an av- advocate of breastfeeding i wanted to breastfeed full time so kahit you know in our meetings in our sessions easily makikita yung yung anak <laughs> na bibidit ko pinapadade and all and like because i wanted like you know people to know that that is normal of being a woman And that should not stop us to, you know, do your role, wear different hearts. But it's also important to have a strong support system. I'm just very, very grateful that in our leadership team, they are very supportive. They do not mind if there are kids crying in the background or just kids popping out suddenly in our meeting, yes. client meetings even. They're very considerate. I'm just grateful for that kind of environment. Because if not, because of that, ang hirap. I would have yes. give, given up already if if not for this, you know, strong family and you know, strong support system. Right. I that's a very good point, Miss Rose. No? So, for example, for like women as entrepreneurs, they want to start and create uh create the passions or like the enterprises that they want uh, that you want to create. It is important, very cool, that we have to understand these dynamics within you and that, that there is the support that is needed for individuals like you who undergo natural stuff that these are things that you cannot control and these are things that you have to take part also in uh, as as also individuals in society i mean there is a need and there is a need to push you know, this uh, uh this advocacy you know? um while you know when you try as a woman when you're trying to create something in your passions you shouldn't be limited on what you want to do or what you have to do because of uh some natural things that are happening in your body and some natural gender roles that, that you should also need to fulfill so i think that that also calls for the need you know, for the action and support and i hope that also the, our our program is also helping you out you now in uh, in providing such pathways for entrepreneurs yeah, like you. Yeah, super. So, 
Yeah. So, so like our incubation program at the US they really helped me a lot. Yeah. And it empowers me na, you know, it's okay to cry. It's okay yeah. to be weak sometimes. It's okay, it's okay to be burned out sometimes, but then yes. giving up is really not, you know, the option. Yeah. Not giving up is not an option. We can we can create the things that we want to do with the right support system and with the right group that will help you out. Maybe we'd like to hear also from Ms. Steph uh, in her journey to also building Empath and also uh, this will be also if you uh, who wants to start. Yeah, sure. Um, For me, I guess a heads up, I'm not really a mom yet. Uh, so congrats. Yeah, no <laughs> yeah. Able to run a company at the same time, be able to um take care of their family as well so for me i guess maybe i can come from experience being a young female entrepreneur yeah. also because uh, there's definitely like there i guess two major layers of bias which it which comes yeah. to like founders which is one if you're female that's one and the other one if it's, you're relatively younger like yeah. your odds are actually yeah. against you in that sense um more of like let's say when it comes to people who believe in you or also when it comes to investors in the future so that's been, I guess, a struggle um, for its sense, especially when there's like a hierarchy for like an unspoken hierarchy or whether it's um, explicit or not so explicit hierarchy when it comes to the generations of when it comes to business. But, you know, what's really great is that although I have to do, let's say, a bit double effort of rapport building or being able to show that, hey, yeah. Empath is really on to something, we do have traction, we're actually... We got yeah. profitable in the first six months, and then we got net positive by the first year of operations. So for yeah. that, um, yeah, and then when they they start to see that, hey, we actually know what we're doing, um, we're very strategic in what we do, and that we've been producing results also, that's also realize, hey, um, doesn't matter, I guess, how, let's say, young I am, or if I'm a female founder. Like, as long as you are able to do it, you do it. And if you're able to produce and make it to your marks yeah. and your milestones, um, I guess it will speak for themselves also. So um, yeah, that's what I learned in that process. So for any like young female entrepreneurs out there, and I noticed um, female founders are relatively young in general. I think because yeah. the older generations back then, when it came to them, like female founders aren't so as common. So I feel like I noticed naturally female founders that are rising are relatively young. So it's a, I feel like it's a, sub bias that they have to deal with mainly because how society evolved yeah. so it's aside from being female also being relatively young um does have its difficulties but i think as long as you're able to show and they get to know you um they realize that hey they actually know what they're doing they're very um on top of what they want to do and all that so yeah um that's how i was able to i guess go through empath throughout that whole journey Right. I mean, you've you did it. You said it best. No, when when you said um, there is actually an unsaid bias. No, when it comes to like the investors table, and when you uh, when you start a startup when you're young, when you're greenhorn, no one backs you up, and most especially if you're a female founder, there's a different tone when it comes to like uh, uh, talking to investors, and that's real. No, when you go into a VC room or investors room, and then and then you're Putting yourself on a negotiation table, there's really a difference. You can you can hear, you can see it. So, um, being you that coming from from this side, you know, that you have also raised uh, uh, mm -hmm. your company to be profitable, you know, that's a that's a really cool feat. You know? Maybe we could also ask for this Wilby. Maybe some some of your experiences also. Hi, Siege. So basically, I can kind of relate to what you uh, Miss Taff, with regards to para, um, differences, especially that coming from corporate, like even in corporate, you see a lot of differences when you're female and then you're male and come from manufacturing, aviation, it's highly um, male-dominated um, industry, right? So I guess the struggle, more for me aside from that, is on the transition because um, when you're an entrepreneur, you have to put in a lot of hats, you know? So you shouldn't, like, especially when you're starting, you shouldn't like stick to what you um what your role is. You should go beyond that. You can go to operations, you can go to finance. Um, you can take in a lot of roles and you should have to be flexible around it. And also I guess um finding the right set of people who really um uh 
parang stay true to the mission that you have the same vision as you is also difficult because um i've learned that uh you have to have those people on board to keep it moving forward because you can't do it on your own so i guess i'm um slowly working on it um taking on the transition at the same time um you know understanding delegation and also having this right set of people who really has the same mission as you so that you're all in line in what you do right so yeah um, can so i also awesome. add that seat? yeah go ahead. Also, go ahead Steph. yeah um completely agree with um also everyone in the panel i think to also add let's say when um, there's also a rise of young female founders, I guess, because of the awareness of the newer generations about um, what how it becomes to gender lenses and female entrepreneurs. I think also what a concern that's been rising is also what they ask, like whether you're going to get married or whether you're going to get pregnant. So at least let's say for the moms, although it's hard, you can also share na. Um, yeah, I was able to run despite, let's say, quote unquote, yeah. despite let's say, having a family. But then for us, there's also th those who don't have a family yet or are planning to. Um, they're also they take note, like if okay, there's a potential risk. Um, if they get married, yeah. when are they gonna get kids and stuff? Which isn't fair because they don't ask the same questions like that with other male founders because they assume that. Um, yeah, you'll be compromised. And I've yeah. known other um, women who've lost a CEO or a potential foundership because they got pregnant or because um, for all these things. Like, I guess it's okay if, like, they choose not to pursue it out of their own choice um, because they'd rather focus on other things. I guess it becomes a problem when it wasn't their choice and then they totally yeah. were um, turned off that they were starting a family for it. So... I think that's just one of the concerns I just wanted to share. But then I'm really grateful for there's a new rise of gender lens investing. So they really invest only for, let's say, women um, to be able to empower them and perhaps also equal the playing field in that sense. So it's really great opportunities to partner with such programs, such as like the WHYS program we're here now supported by the USD. And yeah, um, it looks there's a long way to go. Um, and there are definitely concerns both for those who have um, the older the older females or those who've had their families and all these gender roles. And then also for us um, who have assumed, let's say, gender roles. And then there's also risks that, quote unquote, risks that um, others perceive as when it comes to a female founder. So, yeah, I just want to share it there and really grateful for all the efforts and initiatives, especially what BOSD has done and um, the, with the VHYS program as well. Yeah, uh, you have it, you said it best, Miss uh, Steph. No, when, when you said that we need to equal the playing field, this is uh, you know, there are some things that are asked questions that should be also uh, uh, that should be uh, that you should you should you guys should be available with, and that uh, you know, there is that sort of discrimination that we need to address, was especially in the investing side of things, especially in tech startups. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing those insights. Maybe one last question. Uh, maybe one last question. A little bit, uh, a little bit uh, Miss University, U Universe again. You no. Know? So the question goes, you know, if there was a guarantee that you will not fail tomorrow, what would you most likely do? Okay. So we could start off with Miss Rose. Well, Miss Universe, that's your question. <laughs> but yeah, I only have one uh, line answer to that. Yeah, if there is a guarantee that I will not fail tomorrow, I wanted to bring virtual hands impact formula to the world. Like a lot of persons with disabilities are struggling worldwide and a lot are still like, you know, feeling hopeless. And if we can only reach them, uh, through you know these opportunities because we are operating digitally so we're not limited to like you know one geographic uh, location only so if only uh, yeah we can that is actually the dream the big dream of virtual Han. so uh, there are a lot of roadblocks uh, for sure but yes that is the big dream that we wanted to achieve right so getting the whole world on board that's awesome that's an awesome dream. how about for miss wilby 
So I guess um it kind of in the same line what Miss Rose mentioned, you know, actually to be able to scale at Ani, but at the same time, because um be able to bring back the dignity in general to farmers, because we often see farming as a profession, of agriculture as a profession, parang, uh, it's very lonely. So kind of change that uh, stigma around um, agriculture and at the same time, siguro bring more younger generation into the industry in itself, the agriculture industry, because as I've mentioned, grandparents are farmers, what's the next generation? It stops there, but then we definitely need farmers, right? So I yeah. guess um that's where I really want to push with it. I know there's a lot of struggles, I'm experiencing it now. From the industry in itself, there's a lot of problems already. So um, I hope if it wouldn't fail that I would continue to push for this. Right. Awesome. So getting more farmers involved and hopefully removing all the setback that farmers. Yeah, because there are a lot, there is rather, rather deeper layers of problems that you also these farmers experience. So yeah, great insights, Miss Wilby. How about for Miss Leia? Who will be your what would be the most likely thing you'll do if you'll not fail tomorrow? <laughs> um, kasi a- I'm, I'm a solo founder. So, siguro talaga ang inaasam ko is build a team na yeah. mahirap din ang recruitment, di ba? Hit or miss yan eh. Yeah. So, dapat per- yung perfect. <laughs> like in the perfect world. Team, yung, yung team, who say team talaga and um, right. all over the Philippines. So, I think kasi the market or the, the yung, yung um, creative community is warm na eh about the idea of yung professionalization, mm. sustainability, ganyan, and what we can offer to yeah. the world. More, more importantly, to ourselves as Filipinos. So I think nandiyan sila, it's just that I need people, <laughs> more people to really <laughs> implement and do all of those things. Ayun. So, right. Yeah, and then in a perfect world, lahat maayos ang recruitment process, lahat sobrang galing at sobrang may character, ganyan. Uh, so, yun, yun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, pagpa-file pa lang ng mga benefits, tsaka yung mga, yeah. mga need, ano, no? so building a super team is not easy. And if it would yeah. be tomorrow, we could build it, uh, if if we had a perfect thing, uh, day tomorrow, it would, ha- it would be best if we could have the perfect super team. Okay, thank you. Ms. Dea, how about Ms. Steph? Yes, for me, it would be a robust, um, all-out nationwide type of cool. mental health care that's also free. Yes. So free yes. mental health care for all and it's yes. easily accessible. Yes. That was definitely possible. So yeah, that's the dream also. At the same time, to have a sustainable business. For some reason, if we all make it free, right. um, it still is a sustainable <laughs> business. So, you know, anything's possible in that sense. But honestly... Really to have a robust, uh, robust team that would entail a robust team, robust operations, and all out type of access to mental health care in the Philippines. And to hopefully impact millions of Filipinos to make them thrive and also help boost their mental well being. All right. So, so much, Ms. Steph, no? um, accessible mental health, and with that, free no? and with uh, sustainable business going forward. That's awesome. Uh, before we end, you know, thank you so much for a very, very wonderful conversation. But before we end, do you have any socials that you'd like to share? Any upcoming events? Any marketing that you'd love to share before we wrap up this whole conversation? Uh, anyone who wants to start? Miss, uh, Miss Steph? Yeah, sure. So for Empaths, you can check out our Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and also even Twitter pages. So it's at Empath underscore PH. Or you can even reach out to me via LinkedIn or Instagram. So if you have any questions or even as other female founders growing a business, um, there have been people that just messaged me even on Instagram or LinkedIn. Definitely would love to be able to help and support them as well. Right. Miss Leo. Um, yes, yeah, so um, so we're, we're, we're building this platform of artist management and we plan on launching it in December. So, kanina lang, pina-finalize namin ang title, so it's para sa mga mahuhusay. So, um, it's a, we're going to launch the different features and yung, mga, yung course that we're producing 
the job matching and the community. And they, they just can go to www.husay.co, no M, so, and, um, or you can email me at leia at husay.co. Okay. Right. So, anyone else? Yes, uh, for us, to those who wanted to work with persons with disabilities and also interested, you know, to collaborate and to partner with us. But we're looking actually for a community uh, partners who want to, uh, you know, support our community or like to collaborate with them if they are also working with persons with disabilities and a marginalized group. Uh, feel free to message us in our Facebook page virtualahan or send us a message in our official email hello at virtualahan.com so also uh, I know maraming nagsisimula right now and also you know uh, young uh, who wanted to be a young social entrepreneur and but are struggling doesn't know where to start what to do and that so if you wanted or need uh, help um, and wanted to like build like virtual and to work with the communities like virtual and to, to message us so we have a team who really wanted also to who are very willing to share their knowledge of uh working with marginalized communities building a team yeah the dream of miss leia it's very hard it took us a while to build a strong team and it's very important for you know uh an organization to have a very strong team because when challenges comes yun yung pinaka best support system or when you have the best team who share the same uh, the same mission as yours so yeah so together let's leave positive impact to whoever you'll be meeting every day and let's create a world where no one gets left behind thank you create a world that the ones left behind awesome uh miss wilby yeah, so for Ato Ani, so if you're a farmer, you know, farming communities and a clustered area who want to be part of our partner, Ato Ani um, partnership program or PR businesses who needs fresh produce or um, LGUs, we'll be talking to LGUs and also this um, institutional customers who might be interested for um, database recommendations, then do reach us to, out to us. Our um, website is www.atoani.com. You can also email us at info at atoani.com. And you can reach us on our social media pages. It's also in our website, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, and LinkedIn as well. Or if you're in Bohol, you can visit us in our office in um, Kabuha, Pinavesta, Bohol. Right. Awesome. Thank so thank you so much, ladies, for the wonderful conversations that you had. I hope that you guys here at the Philippine Startup Week also enjoyed our conversations. I hope we were able to listen in our discussions. And yeah, we hope that you enjoyed Women as Builders program today. If you're interested in learning more about social enterprises, feel free to drop a message to our Facebook page of WH1 programs. And of course, please do connect with us through emails. Of course, this event is brought to you by the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council of Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technologies through Research and Development, IDEA Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at MSU IIT, Miriam College Psychology Business Incubator, and UP Growing and Developing Enterprises, University of the Philippines, Mindanao. So with that, I bid you adieu, and we hope that you enjoyed the rest of the Philippine Startup Week. Thank you and babuhay.